I send greetings from the king to the far corners of the land of Jumlers. By call of Sir Robert of Deutz, the hand of the king, a gathering of the clans under, under the sigil Jumla shall happen in the land that is beyond the J. The seven kingdoms of the realm shall gather, yes, those of operations, production, events, programs, and a few more, will gather, all seven, to perform the, the, the rituals required at this time. The highlands and the lowlands of the core of code will gather. The, to the iron islands of the west, the de developers will come. To the hosts in our service to the east, they will gather, including the vast code mountains of the kingdoms of components and the smaller sprawling hills of the kingdom of modules. By order of King Robert, son of Jacoby, of the land of Trump, Draw near and give attention, for the dragon of Krakow has been awakened, and the thrones of Joomla are under siege. Is the king present? He is not prepared to take his throne. How could this possibly happen at this monumental time? The, the, the kingdom has been turned. We have a battle among kingdoms. Everyone is breaking out on their own, taking different directions. We have had turnover in every seat in the, in the realm. Each kingdom has had a change of leader. How disruptive. This might bring us back to our roots, the roots of 12 years ago when we were disruptive. This could be interesting. A new generation of leaders will be serving on the King's Council. I have the opportunity to make a few recommendations to those leaders. One of those was one mentioned last night. For those leaders, there is a book. Yes, leaders are readers. And a book that I highly re recommend is Turn the Ship Around. Now, I understand a ship to be one of those amazing things that can cross the narrow sea it will hold an army of people and defiantly it rides on top of the water. The horse can travel over the water and take people to a distant land. Un unheard of, the Dothraki don't know what to do with this. But yet, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, whenever World War II was, sorry, not doing the math very well. <laughs> There was the worst ship in the United States fleet. The submarine that rated lower than any other ship in the United States Navy. And a captain came in and he was charged with making this ship perform. This particular captain excelled at the ability to empower those in command below the captain. He found that he could get a lot more respect, cooperation, and initiative if he simply challenged the people below him to solve the problems themselves instead of coming to the captain for every decision. Sure enough, it took about five years, and this ship came from being the worst rated ship in the fleet to the best. This is a book worth reading. It is a great story of that time period. It brings back the wisdom of the ages. It is a wonderful recap, though, of the ideas of empowered leadership. I recommend it to anyone who's serving in any of the many levels of our realm in a leadership capacity, even clear down to the dukes and the barons. Join me in that task. Our style of leaderships are changing. They must change because our times are changing. No longer are we unified under a single king. The king was shot. The king was killed. Guns hadn't been invented yet. Oops. <laughs> but her, her ghost sits here in the side row, amazingly. Perhaps she has become one of those arisen whites out of the northern area. Who knows? Um, don't know what has happened there. 
but she has wisdom to share as a CEO of her charge of how to empower people to be a part of our community, how to inspire involvement by people, how to get them to take action. To be a knight in the realm of production, one must have vision. One must have skills and insight and the gift of created ver creative verse so that you are a code poet. Yes, you have to be able to spin the yarn with properly indented spaces. You have to be able to match the style. You must be out there and jousting and engaging in swordplay with the best of them defending your code because your code will suck. In fact, the ravens do take off more frequently than ever before. They, they, they land at distant points all around our world with their 140 character band around their leg and they twitter off these things that really cause disruption in our land. We have to control the messaging that is going out there to the other kingdoms of where our vulnerabilities are. How can we possibly be telling all these people that all so many of our people, their code sucks? Not a good idea. There are those who are still the squires of the program. They're working their way up in rank. They start the, their, their journey on some place like the issue tracker, where they can practice with wooden swords and, and take a more gentler time in a more quiet and secluded place. Much fairer, much easier place to do this. And then those who are elevated to the ranks even higher than that, they become our leadership. In some parts of the realm, People become leaders because those that can't code become leaders. <laughs> it is the Peter principle in action. We elevate people in a meritocracy to a level of skill requirement that they don't have. That is what we do really well. We're open source. We love people to rise in the organization to a level that they are doing something they have no idea how to do. It's great. We keep them challenged. We keep them excited. And the ravens take off again and twitter through the land. It is such an exciting time. I'm glad you are amused. I am actually, in this, this story of the Game of Thrones, I am reminded of another game. It, it came to me on, on one of these magical boxes, these talking boxes that really challenge our world. In fact, it was disruptive. Two days ago, I saw a man, a man right here in the realm, coming into the small council dressed as a woman. I couldn't understand what he was trying to hide. Why is this man walking around in a skirt? This man was then speaking heresy. He was saying, the UI will be gone. <laughs> he was speaking death to the CMS, that the CMS will not exist anymore. How can we allow someone like this in our, into our realm, inside the, the, the walls of our kingdom? Unbelievable heresy coming from this man. And yet, nobody seemed to draw swords. He was allowed to pass freely through our midst. He spoke such heresy, and people went, oh, great wise one, thank you for sharing. Who knows what could happen here? And then there are those who got picked on, like our friend right down here in the front, the man of X, the man who can, can swipe with his sword right across your chest with a beautiful X that will <laughs> signify your future when you die on the sword in the Jumlaverse. But I was wandering off to that other world, that world, that other set of games where it was not quite the Game of Thrones, but a game of wars. Yes, war games was displayed on the, the little talking box not too long ago and a few larger boxes, perhaps maybe 15 years ago. This young man named Matthew Broderick 
was a wizard. He understood this big, huge box called a Whopper. And the Whopper was a special computer wizard that could learn from experience. Yes, this Whopper, through some magic that he called artificial intelligence, I don't understand what that is, uh, except maybe our king might have it. Um, <laughs> it has learned to defeat its enemies by playing a form of the Game of Thrones called thermonuclear war. Korea has learned this too. It's really a problem. But then this sage young knight rescues the kingdom by teaching it the game of three toes. Yes, tick, tack, and toe. The three toes. A marvelous game, an interesting game, an ultimately very boring game because you can't win. And this amazing artificial intelligence comes to the conclusion the only way to play is to never start. Perhaps our knights, our squires, could learn from this and learn that the only way to play in our universe is to never start setting out your ravens, picking a fight to our community. Perhaps it is better that we meet in person and we share and we resolve these things. There was another game that was out there in that same period. A game by a, na a young man named Ender. Ender's game. Ender conquered the universe, rescued the world, but did so with deception. Did so in a way that he finally had to realize that the enemy that he was fighting, in order to understand that enemy, he had to get to know that enemy. To finally get to know that enemy, he came to love that enemy. Wasn't really an enemy anymore. A story with a very tragic ending, but yet gives us insight as to how to conduct the Game of Thrones. That perhaps as we work with each other and we find that we are doing battle with each other, let's find more ways to have more love for each other by getting to know each other better. I am told that this is the land of the famous Polish winged warriors. The wing, how, are, how is this pronounced in Polish? The winged warriors? The ones who have the feathers going down the top of their helmet and down both sides? Say again? Thank you. This country was known during, for, for decades, for centuries, as being unconquerable that during the ravages of the Middle Ages across all of Europe, the mercenaries signed contracts saying they would fight anybody, absolutely anybody, except the winged warriors. Why? Because they were so incredibly good in battle. They were known for having horses that were bred generation after generation to fight an excellent battle. The horses could kill the person in front of them by burying their forward teeth and coming down on the skull of the person and breaking it open and then trampling on that person and walking through. The horses traveled in a straight line forward and would conquer the entire front line. And then with them, the soldiers riding in light armor, very lightweight, could have fight with two swords, one on each side, slashing on both sides. A very formidable force. These soldiers had an average kill ratio of 20 to 1. They were successful in, in fighting armies that are 10 times their size. In our realm, I heard that across the narrow sea, there is this army called WordPress. And worse, on the other side, across the shallow sea, there are many armies forming that are these armies of proprietary software. An unusual concept, I don't understand it. How can they possibly pay the, the, the iron price for the software? They seem to want to pay gold. Oh, it, nobody lives, on, lives by the gold standard here. We are successful because we swing our swords and we take our software. We take it for free. We give it to everybody. We have an unusual way of doing business because of that. And these people over in the land of proprietary, they tell funny stories about us. 
that we're not safe because nobody knows who's actually going to be sitting in the chair fixing your software next week. We could all leave. How many thousands of us are going to leave? We have a huge army. How could all that army leave all at once? I, I boggles the imagination why we seem to fall behind of these people. But across the small sea, there is that land of proprietary code. And in particular, the houses of Wix and Weebly and Squarespace right, try to make an invasion into the continent of open source. Huh. But they're not very successful against us, no, because we have out there WordPress in the front lines defending us. WordPress is the victim to the Wixes and the Weeblies. Those are the kind of people who love WordPress. So let's go let them fight with each other. Wix, Weebly, WordPress, they can all battle each other and decimate each other. And we just get to watch and watch it go away. Because we are so good at serving the agency. The peaceful, nice, simple agency that loves us. That loves the idea that we make agencies lots of gold. It's amazing. And they, they can work less and use our software. They don't have to touch code. And all of a sudden, they get gold. And they still can use the iron price and cut off somebody's head to get the software if they wish. So we do have, have this GPL idea that we can share software, share and share alike. And everyone has a good time with it. There is one opportunity, though. You see, to the north of us is the great valley of JavaScript. And running right through the middle of that valley of JavaScript is the northern wall that protects us from what go is beyond and the winter that is happening up there. Yes, up there, right in the center of, of the realm of JavaScript is the valley of Node. And in the valley of Node, there are amazing creatures that have been mythical for thousands of years. But these creatures have finally started coming to life. They have funny names like React and Angular and Ember and Backbone and Meteor. Oh my gosh, Meteor! It crosses both sides of the wall. It Meteor in one file. You do things on the server side back in our safe part of the world. And then you do things up in that northern side on the other side of the wall in the browser. How can they possibly do both? Will our wall fall down that protects us? That keeps us, all of us working on the server side and working in PHP from being exposed to those browsers. Oh, but maybe the wizard has suggested to me that I share with you and perhaps you can share with your lords the opportunity that might exist there. Because for all those people, all they have for content is what one user puts in their magic little talking box. And so they have these little single page applications without much content that can be delivered. Small memory, not, so, not much delivered there. They can reach out and pull in little pieces of information but they don't have a way to really control it. Wouldn't it be magical if we formed an alliance? We took the, the daughter of our kingdom and married it to the prince of that kingdom, and together we provided curation of all that content. What an amazing concept, because that group is struggling. They all fight for control. They all fight for a way to hold on to their piece of the world, and we, of course, we have big, robust servers that know how to do our piece of the world. But those two don't talk yet. So maybe, just maybe, we send some people over the wall from the PHP side to the JavaScript side. Could be scary. Could be different. Could be disruptive. Let us all notify the king of our wishes in all of these regards to keep our kingdom safe. Let us all support our new squires and knights as they move up in rank and our new lords and ladies as they take over new positions in our organization. Let us all unite together to become the Joomla that will not be overcome. The realm will conquer. Thank you. <laughs>